Welcome back to developing a simple game inside of Vine 3D part 2. Part 1 we talked about setting up the scene and obviously the player controller so it can never get the scene. Part 2, now we're going to talk about different levels. We're going to make a main menu and do a lot of interesting stuff. So, let's get started. This is where we left off previously in the last video. We have a simple game in scene, so let's rename this to be level 1. We're going to have multiple instances of this game, multiple levels. So let's create a new scene, call this one menu. We can bring this down, add in a camera because there are no settings uh, in this new scene. It's completely new. We need a new camera. We can reset its uh, position, bring it upwards. And now we can actually go ahead and grab some main menu uh, button. So in here, in our project folder, we're going to add a new folder called bundled capital B, spell it correctly, if not it won't work. And this is essentially our assets folder. We can paste in the images that we're going to use now. You can find them link in the description. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a plane. And this plane, we're going to apply the image texture to it. And this is essentially going to be our button. Let's go ahead and grab the Armory PBR node, set it to be an image texture. And right now we need to select the images from the bundle. So let's select them here. And we can see we have this normal .png image and when we go into material preview mode you can see we have our image imported onto our plane everything is is good the UVs are correct so we can plug in the alpha here and obviously in blender this you need to set the blend mode to alpha uh, hashed or alpha clipped for it to actually preview the alpha in the uh, renderer uh, but inside of ARM3D it's automatically gonna be using the alpha now we can add a new army traits to this now in the second army uh, logic node tree, we need to go ahead and apply some logic to this. But first, make a new world, set it to be a bright color, for example, an orangey sort of pale color. And this now is going to be our button. So let's go ahead and grab an on update node. Now what we're going to do to detect when our mouse is over is by using a raycast object node. Plug it into the on update node. We're going to grab the cursor location to be the point of raycast. So it's going to detect when our mouse is over any specific object. Now that we've got this basic stuff set up, we can actually duplicate this button object because there's going to be more than one level. So we can grab the array node so we can just duplicate it with a bit more ease, add it to five and then uh, duplicate this whole thing to bring it down to make 10 different levels, 10 different level buttons. So we can duplicate it and bring it and resize and reset it so it's in the position that we like. We're not going to have it completely in the middle yet because we might have other things that we're going to place in the top, for example, scores or things of that nature. Then we can apply the arrays and press P in edit mode to separate them by loose parts. Then go and reset the origins to be the origin of the objects. And same thing for the top part. And now all the different objects are their own individual object, their own origins and not linked to each other in any way whatsoever but still have the same logic node and image texture that we can actually rename to menu and we're going to modify this image by selecting it to be the parameter in the armory settings in the end panel and changing the name of this image texture to be our custom name so we can just rename it for uh, in the label section so we can actually see the image now once we have this image renamed we can actually go ahead and grab the set material image parameter node and we're going to define the node that we just renamed and the image that we want to swap that node to we made a whole video talking about materials and swapping out materials and changing them at runtime that you can watch right here and obviously link in the description as well. So we can select the menu material, which is the uh, material of the object that we're looking for. And the image, we can press the bundled folder and see the second image that we inserted called the select.png image. And this is the image that we're going to set the uh, uh, material to be when our mouse is hovering over it. So as you can see, when the raycast hits one of these objects, it's going to reset that material. However, it's going to stay that material. So what we want to do is to reset it when our mouse leaves it. So we can duplicate this set image uh, parameter node and set it to be in the false of the raycast. So when the raycast is no longer hitting it, we're going to reset it to be the default image and the default image named normal.png, as you can see here in the bundled folder. So we can integrate that to be... Uh, so we can swap that to be the new image that we're setting it to. And now when we test run this again, it works just as expected.
Now we need to go ahead and grab a text object that we're actually going to just rename uh, to be all the different levels. We're going to add a font to it and basically just make sure it just defines what level it is. The label is essentially just that, it's just a label. It's not going to have any logic whatsoever, it's just going to be a static text object. Once we have this in place, we actually need to change the level. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the object, the button object that we added in. We're going to press F2 and rename this to be level underscore one, the exact same name as the name of our level. Or if you have a level number two, then you'd rename the second button to level underscore two as well. The same exact name as the scene name. So once we have this, we can go ahead and create and duplicate the Raycast object node, set it to be mouse started, so as soon as our mouse is clicked. And on true, what we're gonna do instead of changing the image is changing the scene. And we're gonna get the object's name, since the name of the object is the same as the name of the scene that we're wanting to switch to. Basically, we're switching to the uh, scene to be the name of the uh, object. So naming the object is basically half of the work. So it's much easier to switch scenes now and uh, basically figure out which scene you're supposed to be switched to because it's the scene that your object is named. No confusion here, no variables needed, no nothing. Very simple way of doing this and now we can go ahead and grab a little code snippet of on keyboard escape button started and we're going to reset to be the menu scene. Super simple stuff. Now we can play this and you can see that all the levels are selectable, you can click it and you can enter that level. However, we've only got level 1 set up and level 2 as well uh, that we've just created. But now let's go ahead and select an end uh, flag icon just to signify that this is the end of the road. I just use a simple image texture, we can modify UV so it looks proper. And now we need to go ahead and grab a volume uh, collision volume tool, so let's just add a simple cube hide it in the render by disabling the camera icon and now we can apply some logic to it. So we can go ahead and create a new node tree, call it end, open up that node tree and we're going to look for an on volume trigger node because this object does not have rigid body attached, it doesn't have physics. So using the on volume trigger allows you to detect the collision between the two objects without needing rigid body activated. So we can grab the get object by name node. I'm going to explain why in detail in the future but this is very important. And now when obviously this object collides with the object name player, we're going to reset the scene to be that of the main menu. So we're going to be able to choose another level. But all our levels are going to be locked. So let's go ahead and create a write storage uh, node and we're going to call this lock. That is the, the file that's going to be generated. And the data that we're going to add to that file is what level we're able to access. So let's create the level to be whatever the collision object we have here. Let's call it 2. And in the next level, we've just got to rename it to be 3, then 4, then 5. And in here, we basically need to say, all the levels have to be locked except for level number one. So let's go ahead and grab a core node group. This is a rather new feature. I made a whole video talking about it right here. Essentially it just creates a sub category inside your node trees. Let's go ahead and grab a read storage, set it to be locked and zero by default. And we're essentially just going to look at the object's property, which is something we haven't actually added yet. So once we have the object property plugged into the bottom part of the gate node, let's go ahead and add the property itself. Let's rename it to be lock, set the value to be whatever the level is, to in this instance we can do the same thing for level number three set it to be the lock variable set it to be free as its value now just to find that the variable we're looking at is the lock variable that we just created and obviously make sure it's greater or equal so if our variable our levels that we're able to access is greater than zero then uh, we can access level number two for example uh, so if it's not greater than 3 then we won't be able to get to level 3 or level 4 or level 5. And let's just put this in between the true and the change the selector material. We also need to copy and paste that not only so it doesn't uh, bring up the selecting icon that we showed right here but also so that when we increment our score like I just did now we can select level number 2 but either way we would always be able to get into level 2 because the level switch isn't changed it's just the visual effects that has been changed so we need to copy and paste that and put it in between the level switch as well now we just uh, set the object property for all the other buttons right here uh, whatever the level is that is going to be its variable and so everything is going to work perfectly fine and basically this is a great way to increment the amount of levels you're allowed to access inside your game. 
However, there's a critical flaw to this, as in when we create a new level, a new instance from the level number one, level number two, etc. Every time we build out the new level, it's not going to work. The code isn't set up properly. I was narrow sighted and I didn't think in advance enough, but essentially we need to have a way to make the objects uh, work seamlessly with the scripts in hand because the scripts are specific to a specific collection for the collision. So first of all the collisions I thought it would work and optimize a node tree if we added everything to the player that isn't actually the best option. We need to add it to be in the individual spikes. So we're going to create a new node tree in the spike objects and we're going to call it spikes and in here we're essentially going to say if our object collides with an object called player by using the get object name node again then we're going to restart the scene however if you've seen my video this one here where i talked about switching levels you may notice that every time you have an instance of a scene it increments the name of the object so it adds 0 0.001 0 0.002 etc so we need a way to make sure the object's name is always player throughout the entire levels instead of player dot zero zero one to do that we need to go ahead to the player script in here on initialize as in on start we need to set the object's name the object we're going to leave blank because by default it is the player object and the name we're going to rename this object to is player and so that is why we used in the previous uh, script the get object by name player node because even though each object is going to originally be player.001, player.002 in all the different levels, we're going to rename them as soon as the scene starts, so all the logic is going to work flawlessly. This may seem overly complicated, but essentially every time we have an object inside of Unfree D, it has to be a different name because when this is compiled, each object needs to be its own separate thing. If not, the program doesn't know what it's doing. So you have to have this pro tem uh, name change at runtime because the file is still got its own individual name. The asset is still a completely different asset with its own ID. Uh, we're just pro tem changing it for it to work with the script. That's it for now, but next video we're going to talk about adding extra controls to your players and things like boosters, speed ups, different special things that you can collect in game that can boost you, as well as level building and general well, game development stuff. So that's it for now, see you next video.